Uh, so she said to me, Headley, there's no pogo sticks allowed, but there's plenty of custard on site. I'm not about that life. And I'm Headley. Let's roll the music. Hey, hey. What, what 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 are you doing, Headley? What I mean What do you mean what am I doing? What kind what, of an what, intro was that? Uh, We're meant well, to have a serious <laughs> listener base and oh, uh, goodness me. Oh Welcome to uh, Wessex Ways podcast episode twenty four. Twenty four, that's right. Twenty four so, th- you know, new, new listeners, bear with us a minute while we just sort this out. So what usually happens is, I think Paul's cottoned on to something I've been doing at the start of the podcast, is that I introduce the podcast, I introduce us both, and so there's nothing left to say, and then I hand over to Paul, and of course he can't do anything. So I think he's cottoned on to that and just thrown a curveball today. I just thought, you know, it's time, Heather, it's time <laughs> things were thrown back in your general direction to deal with. Yeah. So, oh, you know. no. Oh, it's going to be one of those evenings. Fantastic, uh, anyway, fantastic. How's, so, it, how's it going, Headley? Have you, have you got yeah, a special beer this evening? It's all good. It's all, I do have beer this evening. So I am, um, well, I, you know, I, I was going to go out and get myself um, something a bit different. But unfortunately, it was a little bit last minute um, because of stuff today. And so I just went to the local shop. But, and Warren Brand, you are going to be proud of me again. I'm on the old speckled hen. Old speckled hen. And could be what, worse, Eddie. Could be worse. Dire could be worse. crap are you on the scene? Right. Well, it's like this. Rebecca, as you may have seen or not seen, is very much pushing her own YouTube channel at the moment because she loves it and she loves a bit of train it's travel. Good. So good. the other day she took a trip to Edinburgh by Lumo. Lumo Ooh. give you a beer. They do lots of things, apparently, but one of the things is they do they give you a beer. So I'm I, Rebecca brought it back with me specifically for the um, uh, for the reason of drinking it during the podcast. It's done by Don Zoko. It's called Foamy Beer. I don't even know what's a foamy beer, Headley. I, I don't know. Put it in the comments. Yeah, put it in the comments. So I'm, train I'm, beer. It says train on the front beer. There. Train beer. Okay. Lumo. Lumo. Lumo is like a separate brand or franchise. I think they're owned mm. by First, and they go mm. to Edinburgh and back. That's it. Um, Fantastic. It was it was a trip by Rebecca. You can you can watch her YouTube mm. channel and video on the Lumo mm. train journey to Edinburgh. Um, she did she did a good video on the South Bank as well, um, going along the South Bank in London. Oh, that yeah. was that was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was just looking at that because she was she's not down. She was not that far from Westminster Bridge to begin with. But yeah, there's there's a there's um a scam going on on Westminster Bridge have you do you know about it nope so it's what it is is there's a load of people on there and they do what is called the the ball and cup uh scam so oh, okay. it's three three cups of the ball underneath they do that and you then select you know which one you think it's under yeah and you but the difference is you put money on it now it is a trick it's it's you know yeah. they've got some method of moving it between cups and there's a lot of them doing up and down the bridge now if for, for you and i walking over there with your family and all that you know you see that and you know you put a fiver on it sort of thing it's a bit of fun isn't it yeah. but what you don't know at the time is that everyone in the crowd of people around you are in on it uh, and okay. so what happens is when they do it they're seen to be winning Yes. But when you go in there, you will lose your money. Yeah. And they take thousands. And they have spotters, spotters at either end of Westminster Bridge, spotting for the police, getting ready to radio through to get everyone to move on. It's a real scam. um, Watch that program. I think it was on BBC Two or something Mm. like Hustle or The Real Hustle or something where there was Mm. like a a team of three of them that used to go along Mm. and try and show you how all those scams are done. Mm. And and by and large, like you, you've nail on the head there. Mm. You've said there were like a group of people all in on it, yeah. and you think that the essence is, and what are the economics of that business model? 
you've mm. got to pay a lot of people. I read a book called Freakonomics, and it was all about the economics of crime. And there was this guy that basically did about 10 different examples of all these different crimes like this mm. to make money. And he said, he said, in nine out of 10 cases, you're better off getting a minimum wage job stacking shelves in a supermarket. No disrespect to those stacking shelves in supermarkets. No, 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 no. That was the point. You you will earn more money in nine out of ten, um, you know, instances by just getting a minimum wage job than you will through crime. And with crime, obviously, you have the extra additional uh, threat that you might be prosecuted or put in prison mm-hmm. or it, yeah. many things. So uh, yeah. I wonder. I wonder. Better, yeah? yeah. But anyway, I think it's just, a, you know, sort of gentle warning to listeners. If you're crossing Westminster Bridge, don't get yeah. suckered into it. You will lose your money. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, anyway. Anyway. So we so normally talk about Wessex, Headley. We um, do talk about podcast. Wessex. So and guess... we're going to be talking a lot about Wessex tonight, aren't we? So um, I think so. Yeah, I think so. This is a slightly more normal episode we we don't have any anybody uh besmirched in tweed uh as a guest um <laughs> unfortunately i mean that was brilliant um and uh we we just just you and you and i we do however have some amazing and not to you know spend half the podcast talking about the podcast um you know like some others do but it, you know we do have um some rather special guests lined up don't we so are they, are they going um, to wear tweed is that um, like a female that anyone on this podcast has do you know, to wear? No, no, I, I think I think we're <laughs> probably through the tweed phase of the podcast at Which, the moment. Apart from obviously promoting, you know, Tweedy Outdoors, we're not paid for that. Um, but he does mention <laughs> us on his videos, so we have to. He did. Yes, he did. I, I watched the last he one. He did. Yes, I got a little mental. Um, I was very happy. It's good. That makes it? me happy. Um, so mm. yeah, we have we we've caught a big fish for the you know the next guest, and that's Marianne Ahota from the television. Brilliant, uh, so brilliant historian, TV presenter. She was on Time Team. Um, she well, she's hosted God knows how many things, um, and she yes. is coming on. We're here on Wessex Ways, so spread the news, everyone. Yeah. Uh, let's get some viewers on that. Uh, she you know she deserves. Uh, a lot of and viewers and listeners, of course. Um, and um, yeah, and then after her, we do have the aforementioned Warren Brand excellent. coming on. Uh, the excellent Warren Brand. I don't think there'll be any tweed. I think that's more outdoor gear, although he does wear a very distinctive leather hat, oh, uh, which I'm hoping he'll bring on. I, but, I, uh, I will be, I will confess that I've not watched one of uh, his videos as yet, but I will correct that very soon. Well, um, let, let me send a few of my favourites over yeah, do to that. you. That's do probably that. the best way of doing it. Um, because I'm trying to get you out. I'm, I'm buying a tent. I want to do some camping. Um, I've got Avebury area in my sights and Milk Hill. Yep. Also um, looking at parts of Wales, uh, particularly pa- places that Warren himself has actually gone to and camped as well. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've actually, although I've, you know, I bought the tent and picking it up Sunday and realised that I've actually already got four tents in the garage so, so, and we've got another one coming as well so we're gonna have six tents wow uh, but this is this is a good one this is a good tent yeah I, I can't wait to get it it's a little one-man tent that um one of these aerodynamic things yes yeah. so okay yeah. so we're going to be talking i think both of our subjects this evening will be about wessex places in wessex um Paul's, uh, there's no point in doing a treasure hunt for Paul's place because I know where it is. Um, Paul doesn't know where mine is, and so that will later on for those that are viewers that are listeners that are clinging on for probably for dear life by that point, to be honest with you, um, will finally be eradicated through that pointless um, game that we, we play that uh, I'm surprised Everybody loves. hasn't everybody's favourite completely off the air I think I need but to before... start a poll Hedley. I think I need to start like um, some mm. kind of evidence based survey to mm. um, to convince you how popular that feature of our podcast truly is no, no. can I we turn know, it around yeah. can, can we have in the comments people on YouTube can you put in the comments how much you hate treasure you hunt love, how much you love no 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 no, no. you hate <laughs> the treasure hunt feature it's pointless boring time wasting and and it makes people motion sick with the map. So, oh, yeah. That, so to that. be fair, we do need to change that feature. I will hand that to you. Well, Jay, speaking to, yeah, of motion today sickness, I, will, Hedley, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, oh, I'm drinking the Lumo beer 
I'm not having a great time. Okay, so for those listening on Spotify, Apple, Google, YouTube, and whatever, I mean, Paul look, is holding what look. looks to be a slightly tepid, frothing cup of urine in a Coca Cola glass. Do you know what? I wasn't going to say that, but now you've said it, I'm th- I'm kind of thinking that maybe. Yeah, I need to drink some more water if this was if this was the produce. That is the it's worst looking good, Coca-Cola it? I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, enough okay. of my... So, um... one, one more thing, one more bit of housekeeping before we get on to what we've done yeah. the, this last couple of weeks. Um, you you uh, put on Facebook something on Twitter that you've got a, a plaque issue or something. Oh, now, yeah. Have I, you been to, to the, the dentist? dentist? Yeah, I need to get, yeah, I need to get yeah. one of the little picks. The thing yeah. is, Eddie, it's a really, really big bit of plaque that I've got. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, oh, look at you. Look at you. <laughs> for, for the benefit of those listening on the podcast, I'm holding up something that has a small mirror in it. <laughs> you stop it's and, distorting my face. And Headley can see himself. <laughs> It's like it's like one of those funny mirrors at a fair. You're making me look even fatter than I am. <laughs> yeah, so I'm holding up a YouTube pack, which is lovely. That arrived in the post of the day. No, I, I feel really guilty, right? I'll tell you why. Because it's got my name on it. You'll note it's got Paul Whitewick on it. We know so, that, yes. Yeah, that's me, right? Yeah. So yeah, when, we, <laughs> when we were at 85,000 subscribers, Rebecca and I came to the decision that we would change the name of the channel because Rebecca wanted to really push her own channel. She said, look, your videos are kind of just you these days because they're more documentary and that's the way we want it to go. Rebecca says, right, rename the channel. I'll really want to push mine. So we renamed it. When we were 85,000, we were really going nowhere fast. And we were, it took us like a month to get 1,000 subscribers. Then all of a sudden, the channel took off. And the last 90 days thereafter went mad. And we got like 16,000 subscribers in just you know, a very short period of time. And all of a sudden, this turned up. And um, mm. I'm feeling a bit guilty because it should say Rebecca, but mm. it doesn't. Because obviously I want to, you know, it's not yeah. just one person that made the videos. It was Rebecca. she might she might come along with a pair of compasses and scratch her yeah. name at that point. But yes, yeah. yeah. But that's why she well, she is adamant she will have hers very soon. So yeah, I um, think she will. You know, I think she will. And and thanks for for those watching on YouTube. Thanks uh, for inadvertently showing us around the room you're in using your highly reflective. Uh, uh, well, I mean, there's nothing to hide. I see you. If I look over well, there, there's a shoe collection red, of Rebecca's. Red curtains, a shoe rack. Oh yeah, there's a bed. This is, oh, I mean, the other thing is, I, I am building a studio as we speak, Headley. So you are, for the moment, stuck in the mm. white bedroom. Um, oh, dear. So I'll have to so, respond in kind and do the same. Well, but, you have to build a studio. You see, the, put your YouTube plaque in the background as well, Headley. YouTube um, plaque? I've got you, 300 followers. <laughs> you don't... What do you get for 300 followers? A, a, <laughs> a piece of paper or a rubber band or something so well, the thing is I'm you know I've had people asking about these blue curtains behind me in here and I actually record this in my wife's office so at the back of the house we have two offices over there is mine which I do my work in um, maps of Heathrow and drone pictures and goodness knows the two are not related and uh, over here is my wife's office so um, and I use this because it's furthest away from the rest of the house and less susceptible to interruptions oh yeah. fair enough but, so yeah, yeah. What have you, so I'm working what have you I'm been working what have you what have you been up to this week apart from um, replacing Rebecca in bed with your pluck and stuff yeah. like that yeah well I'm sorry Rebecca but you know it's um <laughs> it is what it is basically and there's even Ugh. a mirror on it. Anyway, what have I been up to? I've been I've been largely based locally around Salisbury. I'm not going to get too much detail because there'll be a video or two that won't have been released yet. Um, so I don't want to give too much away. But mm. suffice to say, um, I was showing a dipstick today, uh, which was marvellous. Some of you may know what that means. Some of you may not. Um, I've also been looking at... Again, I'm not going to go into detail, but I've been looking at uh, mystery railways. Um, and not a lot of people know that are there or know the reason why they're there. So that was a little video. And I've also been talking about the first king of Wessex. In around about 580 AD, um, a man called Sherdick. And I pronounced that correctly, believe it or not. Now, that is a hmm. big video we're doing. Probably in around about a month's time. And we're doing it based on the request of an author who's written a book on said character. 
and has been using Anglo-Saxon charters to plot the burial site of the first king of England. So um, there's a little little treat in a, in a wow. for you. Yeah, that's sort of two or three lots of suspense there. That's great. So yeah, so I'm not going to go yeah. into detail about any of those because obviously there mm. are videos coming up soon. Um, yeah. But yeah, suffice to say, we've been wandering around Salisbury in the rain today. And yes. uh, yeah, we've had a meeting with, with a guy that's written a book, which you can pre-order, but I'll, we'll come mm. to that soon. Yeah. And of course, you've you've been, I, I proofed another video of yours, which is probably yeah. out by the time this comes out, which I think you're going to be talking about as well. Um, yes. So on Maiden Castle, uh, which is yeah. a uh, fascinating place. And we'll, we'll get onto that in a bit uh, shortly. So. Yeah, wow, I'll talk okay. that because there's a lot more. As ever, yeah. a YouTube video mm. is 10 minutes long or thereabouts, yeah. maybe 15. And there's always yeah. so much more to say. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I even for that video, I even had a meeting with Miles Russell. Uh, mm. I think he's head of Bournemouth University Archaeology Department, um, who kindly sort of gave me some more insights. And I, I didn't mm. really have opportunity to share those. So it'll be good to talk about a couple of those as yeah. well. Uh, yeah yeah which i shall do what about yourself Eddie? what have you been up to in the last been, week or two i've been fairly busy um let's take a swig of beer very unprofessional um so yeah i've been um um i've been busy so um but but not not busy as in you know sort of chores busy ch busy as in interesting stuff busy so uh last night um i went to a a talk on the Ridgeway by Dan Bashford from Historic England. So I went with um, Anna. Uh, so thanks to Anna for paying for me to go along and driving me there as well. Very good. Uh, and that was that was really good. And he, he was concentrating on the stretch of the Ridgeway. Uh, sort of from, I think he looks after the, let me get this right. He looks after the scheduled monuments and the ancient sites between Wayland Smithy and Nuffield on the Ridgeway. So you're looking mostly along the middle Ridgeway, uh, yeah. along the, you know, the remind scarp and the me where, Remind me where Nuffield is. Nuffield's in the Chilterns. It's the South Chilterns. Right. So, so that think way up. Wallingford, Wallingford yeah. Way. So if you draw a line between Wallingford and Henley, yeah. it's halfway along that line. Okay. Um, so he was telling us about all these places like Rams Hill, which is something I've featured recently. Uh, he was telling us uh, about a little bit about Lowbury, about uh, some of the field markings up on Streetly Warren, about the Grimsditch sections. Um, yeah. And he lives um, fairly near the Ridgeway uh, around the sort of the Wantage and Hendreds area. So he, he sort of majors on the, the stuff along there. So things like Scutcham and Knob and... and um, yeah, uh, around by Lord Wantage Monument and stuff like that. Oh, hold so, on. I've, got, I've got a replacement no, beer, Headley. You got a replacement beer. Oh, there's, there's water. Hold that on. doesn't look Sorry. very beer like. That has. Is, can I? Can I give you that? Or do you want to just tip it? So, so sorry about this, everyone. Sorry, um, everyone. This Paul, is, this Paul, is... Paul is just uh, sorting out his. Uh, I, his I don't want to knock so, the Lumo beer, but it's not. It's not. No, good. that's it's fine. We can get that? some I know. music. Taste oh, hello, Rebecca. I, you Headley said oh, hello. Sweet. Can't... Hello. That's... Well, this is this it's is off, isn't fantastic, it? isn't it? So, uh, for people uh, <laughs> listening in, Paul is just opening off, a beer. I'm, I'm, I've pale. moved over to the traditional butty back, Headley. Absolute Again. terrible <laughs> entertainment. Um, <laughs> terrible well, entertainment. <laughs> terrible entertainment. We can't, we can't can, completely can expunge sure Tweedy from our system, system, can we? So... Uh, so that's good. So, right. So, well, sorry, um, as you were. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. It's we, we can't have you get in front. You can't get between a man and his beer. Um, so that was the Ridgeway talk. Um, so I'm um, going to fly my own flag a little bit here. To be honest with you, maybe I do it a bit too often. I shouldn't do. Not worthy of it. But um, uh, I, I, well, I provided the cover photo for British Archaeology magazine. Uh, yeah, this episode. Saw that. So this is uh, for the next few months of Old Sarum because. Mr. Sorry, Dr. Alex Langlands uh, has done a piece on Old Sarum Inside. Definitely yep. worth a read. Um, some interesting insights in there. And I discovered a hill fort. Oh, are you, are you allowed to divulge fort. as yet? 
I can. Well, no, okay. When I say I discovered a hill fort, I didn't discover a hill fort for the first time. I mean, you know, there's a path around it and a fence and oh, you know, okay. it was written hill fort on an OS map. But, but for in so my you own mean little discovered world, it for you. Yes. I've discovered for me uh, a hill fort. Um, strangely, uh, very close to where I have lived for a great deal of my life when I was a child. Um, so this is over again, sort of March and Frilford area, little, uh, little village called Charney Bassett. Um, I used to cycle through it a lot and Charney Bassett's a charming little place, beautiful little church. Um, but there's a path going out to the North and there's a hill fort, although it's not actually on a hill. It's, so it's just a fort really, but it's huge. It's called Cherbury okay. Camp. <laughs> and so I sent the drone screaming up and, took some aerial photos of it do you know what let me through go on for those go on, for those go on. for those that are those <clears throat> that are on youtube let's do a share of photos I'll, um, for those that are on the podcast version the spotify i'll describe what i'm seeing first of all i can see headley's forehead oh now i can see now i can see okay. bing maps headley this is exciting right so i feel like we're right, starting so, treasure hunt too early so yeah, no. So what I've done is I've straight away I've shared the wrong screen. <laughs> so I need to stop sharing. Share. Why am I so Ladies bad at this? Gentlemen, Again, I do this back to Hedley's face. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, here we so go. Cherbury Camp is this one. So tell me if this opens. Can you see that on your screen? All I can see is your folder. Your folder with the oh, pictures. Oh, I in. despise. Microsoft. I can't see the actual picture. No, it's fine. No, I can share it this way. I'll just share the. I should just right. There we go. There you go. So, oh look at um, that. So for for those that are listening in, I'm now sharing a, an aerial photograph of Cherbury. And as you can see, it's kind of. Was um, that those that you're watching on YouTube can see? It's kind of an oblong. It's a multi valate hill fort. So it's Iron Age and multivalate means it's got more than one circular earthwork around it. In fact, mm. it's, it had three. <clears throat> so you can see down towards the bottom um, here, does the zoom work here? So yep. you can see yep. down towards the bottom there mm, okay. are three defensive earthworks. As you follow the bottom one round, unfortunately it's been ploughed out by agriculture. Now there's local legend has it that in the background here you've got Uff oh, very bad resolution this. Um the original picture's not. Uh, mm. you got Uffington Whitehorse Hill just there. And apparently they invaded and captured this particular fort. But then some people are saying it wasn't invading and capturing, it was actually um literally just, you know, uh, it was empty and they, they took it over. But yeah. Yeah. I mean that's very place. close to sort of invade and capture, isn't it? Because surely Yeah. If we're talking Iron Age, obviously we are. Yeah, is it, and we're talking the tribes of the Iron Age. Well, that's very close. That's like what ten miles. Yeah, that... yeah, mm. yeah. That's so them. yeah, so there's that. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done today. It's it's been really mm. good. So, um, before my birthday in December, I was talking with Sam Walks a lot, uh, who was a, a guest on here. Uh, surname is not actually walks a lot but you know we'll refer to her that way for now and um <laughs> she she promised me a birthday walk and so we decided on Avebury we decided to make it a night walk um and then we decided to make it a morning walk with the sunrise so all you know it sounds sort of idyllic to begin with but uh, unfortunately things don't go according to plan as we know things generally don't so we had to postpone and uh, it was today that we picked up on it and, and, and done it so um, we travelled, I mean, I, I woke up middle of the night uh, to when the alarm went off um, and the the rain was bashing against the window. And so immediately I, I, I mean, we knew it was forecast rain, just didn't realise quite how heavy the rain was going to yeah, be and how yeah. cold it was going to be. Anyway, you know, dogged Britishness takes over. And so I got in the car and we, you know, I drove down to A3, met up with Sam. And we start our, our night walk, so we're walking around the stones. And you know, f five o'clock in the morning, you know, on winter's morning when it's dark for a few hours, you, mm. in that kind of conditions, there is nobody else around, you know. And so everywhere you point your head torch, it, it lights something up, 
and it's kind of eerie and you know we all know our way around Avery let's face it but you know when you're there in the dead of night with the the rain and the mist and the wind and the cold it's a completely different place but I remember Tweedy saying um he used the word atavistic in the last yeah. podcast didn't he yes and it's still, you know, even in those conditions at that time of night, you still get that feeling. That's yeah. what I made. It doesn't have to be a summer's day sunset to have that mm. feeling when you're at Avery. Um, OK, it's it's going to feel a bit more special when you you are there at that time. But, you know, this was great. So she was doing a video because she, she does YouTube videos there. And we walked up the avenue uh, after looking at all the trees and stones around Avery. And then we went up to West Kennet Longborough. And, you know, dark and head torches. Yeah. Uh, and by the time we got up there, we were frozen. It was, you know, we were wet mm. through. Um, you know, we got very good waterproof clothes and, you know, fab sealed them and everything. But when you've been out a few hours in heavy rain and driving wind, you know, you, you, know, you can't keep it out. You can't hold back the tide, so to speak. So went into the West Kennet Long Barrow. Of course, nobody there because no one's as stupid as we are <laughs> at that time. And in there, uh, the, the temperature, a little bit like um, the old Canning's Long Barrow, is, yeah. is not always the same as it is outside. Yeah. And so actually it was a bit warmer in there. And yeah. of course it's dry in there. So we set up, we had, had lots of different torches and head torches of various colours, set them up into the actual, you know, the, the yeah. ledges around. Yeah. Uh, and we actually made a quite a nice ambience sort of place to be. So we decided to spend some time there and, you know, um, we had an English breakfast. We didn't cook it in there, just to be clear. We've had comments we did not cook in <laughs> a scheduled monument. Um, but we did have uh, bacon, eggs, uh, fresh bread, freshly ground coffee and stuff like that with us. And it was just special. And of course, and we put some music on as well. So we put on, is it John Dunn or John Lunn? Uh, the, the, the Last oh, Kingdom. okay. Yeah, the um, um, Last Kingdom, yes. Yeah. And the, and the edge larks as well, and um, yeah, it's really good. And then we we, you know, um, came out and it was it was light. Um, it was it was really yeah. really good, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly well, enjoyed that, it. that is a very different birthday present, isn't it, Edley? Like it? It is. It is. It was. Um, it was. It was very different, and it's it's it, you know it, it's strange when you talk about it, um, but it just felt at the time. It just kind of felt, you know, um, it felt what I, what I wanted to do. So I've put, for those on YouTube, uh, you can probably see on my screen now, I've put my British Archaeology magazine just to Just, show to, just to have it there, Hedley. Just, just, just to have, to it, have there. it there. I mean, if you're, do, if you're going to do that, I'll just I'll just sit sit here like this with, with one. <laughs> all with right, the, so with this. Look, all, uh, all right, look, your trump card is better than my trump card, I know. My trump card got a bit Fine. of water on it or something. Not good, is it? Has it? There we go. That sounds like a, good, a great little, great little birthday present. Okay. Great little birthday. What's present. what's the million one like? The million is gold, right? I mean, I don't think it's made of gold, but I might be wrong. Maybe it is. Um, and then there's a ten million, which I think is diamond. Maybe. Mm. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Well, it, it, I've not researched. It, it should this. be precious metals and stones for the amount that YouTube are making out of you. You're correct. As well. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, I digress. Anyway, that, that do you know what, so, that pic, your picture highlights the old cathedral very well, doesn't it? Yeah, it and really it shows that up. It's funny because the, 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 Alex Langlands wanted um, a picture for his book, and it, it's he wanted right. So you, you got to think about how you would do this. He wanted a picture of the the base of the old cathedral on top of the hill for at Old Sarum. Yeah, which is where he, I think, he led the excavations, with actual Salisbury Cathedral in the background. Right. So there's, you, you can't do that. You know, if you if you've got a um, yeah. a standard camera and you point it at that thing, you need a um, kind of a, a panorama shot to get it all in. Yeah. But Salisbury Cathedral itself is so far away that unless you zoom right in, you're not going to see it. No. So, and if you send a drone up, which I don't, you know, recommend from National Trust or English Heritage Land, but if you happen to be on a nearby footpath and throw a drone up, then fine, yep. you can get a picture of Old Sarum. But again, Salisbury Cathedral's too far away to see. 
So yeah. what we did is we did some um, telephoto lens <clears throat> experimentation. So we sent the drone up um, about between half a mile and a mile from Old Sarum. So um, from the then, opposite side. From the opposite oh, side, that's right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you're in the north uh, to the north. Yeah. Um gotta be careful, there's a flight restriction zone there as well. Yeah. Nearby. Um and pointed the camera back towards Old Sarum and then zoomed right in. Yeah. So you you're in far enough to capture the, the cathedral on the ground or the mot on the top. But it also brings up Salisbury Cathedral behind and you can get both in shot. And I didn't know if it worked. I tried it on Google Earth, um, giving away trade secrets there, um, mm -hmm. and then doing doing a crop of uh, a screenshot, and that seemed to work. Um, so we replicated it with the drone, and it worked. So yeah. uh, that was that was good. That was that was enjoyable. Mm. Brilliant. Anyway, that's what that's what I've been doing this week. So, uh, Excellent. Do you want to do well, some talking about? Should I do a little bit talking about one of my favourite places? Increasingly yeah. becoming one of my favourite places, which is Maiden mm. Castle, mm. Um, <clears throat> which many of you will know is not a castle in the essence that we know it. It is actually a hill fort. Um, and the hill fort you see today was built or constructed between 600 AD and maybe 450 to more of what it looks like today. Um, and there's, there's a lot to see. Not only is it absurdly vast, and I mean absurdly vast, in, in, in its acreage, which we'll talk about in a second, Eddie, but in terms of its acreage, but then, you know, if you're looking from above the plan view, well, you can you can almost probably double its size with the the, the ditches and the earthworks, the embankments. Um, it's a fascinating place. And I, I think sort of the early traces of it in terms of the Neolithic, not occupation, but activity there, goes back to 4,000 4, BC. So there's a, a Neolithic causeway right along the top which you can still see today like um a traditional sort of causeway and six thousand years old now they, they think there was no sort of um inhabitation there at that time but there are well there have been two um bodies found two children aged between sort of five and seven i think but just to think that they did that four thousand years ago it takes you it gives you it gives you an idea of how people treated that landscape even back then you know way back and then yeah i say more recently but uh 600 bc when we all started building hill forts everywhere well they built this one and it was probably about half no well, it probably was 16 or 17 acres um so maybe sort of a quarter the size of what it is maybe less um, still big. I mean, still, still yeah. much bigger than almost all Iron Age hill forts. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, and I think it took them a sort of 150 years to really then beef up the earthworks. And I've been to quite a few hill, hill, hill forts. You've been to a few, Headley. And you walk up and down the ditches, the embankments, and you're still left in awe. But this is just like, like nothing else. Just stood on the top, and you've got maybe four layers but it's not just the layers it's the scale of those layers it's just ridiculous um and you know you you they'd probably be a little bit steeper than what they are now but they're very steep you'd have had the wooden ramparts on the top um and just the most formidable um defensive structure you can imagine and that's sort of where this story starts for me because I, I think I heard maybe like a BBC Radio Sounds little production about the um, the chap called Mortimer Wheeler, who in the 1930s, him and his wife Tessa did a lot of excavations of there. So very, very highly reputed archaeologist of his time. And he really brought archaeology forward in leaps and bounds. But at the time here, his time at uh, Maiden Castle was a very strange, curious one because he seemed to really want to popularise archaeology. He knew that there was no such thing as funding. So he needed funding from sort of private um, individuals. And to do this, well, you need to popularise it. You need to make archaeology this most dramatic thing. So he yeah. went to Maiden Castle with a big agenda. And that agenda 
was to tell this amazing story and get everybody to come and see this amazing story of how the Romans invaded Britain and how they just completely sort of tore apart these hill forts. And everything he found, he fitted to that narrative. So the narrative was already there. The story was already there of how the Romans came and brutally killed everybody there. You know, they burnt the place to the ground. And he found all this evidence, which he said, well, this is it. It supports it. He got all the newspapers on board. You can go back on the British newspaper archive and you can see all these articles of how Mortimer Wheeler got on board the local press. And people were turning up from miles away to see what Mortimer Wheeler had found. He'd found all these but 52 adult males in a grave. And he said they'd just been chucked in there. Uh, 75% of them have got wounds to the head and torso. Therefore, look what the Romans did. There's one of them with a bit of a blister in their spine. There's a famous picture. Um, and that was it. He sold this story. And we all believe that the Romans came here in AD 43 and brutally attacked all these um, tribes. Um, but it turns out none of it was true. Um, and that's kind of the story I told the weekend just gone when the video came out. Um, whereby he did the archaeology and he found all these things, but it turned out that the graves, the 52 bodies in the graves, they could have been from any era and they weren't just shoved in that grave. They were placed with the goods alongside them. Yes, they were very much um, had signs of the, the attacks of the torso and the head, but that could have been at any point. And I think it was a, a, a chap called... Not, um, Niall Sharples or Neil Sharples and he did the archaeology there in the 1980s and 1990s and said well there's no evidence at all that this is Roman in fact I think this could have happened over a longer period of time um, and to top it all off well this place was abandoned by 100 BC so like 140 years before the Romans got here to the Romans Maiden Castle would probably have looked very much like what it looks like now to us Wow. Maybe a, maybe a few more bits of sort of <coughs> yeah, yeah. wood strewn about, uh, and the roundhouses that um, he said had been burnt to the ground, they weren't burnt to the ground at all. They actually found sixty or seventy kilos worth of um, what do they call it? Um, iron slag. So the workings, metal workings, all the offshoots of the, the, the metal workings, and N Neil Sharp would describe the the, the Maiden Hill Fort as the largest um production center of um tools and iron, iron you know, workings in the british isles it, it was a factory um but of course mortimer wheeler said no actually i think you'll find that they are remains of burnt roundhouses just because it fitted his narrative so and, he was deliberate it wasn't mistaking oh, this it was a, an embellishment of a story well a changing of a story for sensational purposes it's difficult to tell there was certainly right. a narrative in place of what he wanted to to sell hmm. whether it were yes it was deliberate but i think and this is where i spoke to a chap called uh miles russell and i want to thank miles russell for his time because he was great hmm. and he said i don't want to take too much away from wheeler because wheeler did so much for archaeology he did so much to get it where it is today and in the limelight. Yeah, he was he was the time team of yesterday. Um, mm. but, excuse me. But yes, it was very much um, a, a, a story of misinformation. Yes, all these things were found. That's it. End of conversation. We'll just shove it into that narrative. Yes, I found bodies. Yes, I found burn marks. Yes, I found all these different things. Oh, look, it was the Romans. That was it. Um, so his archaeology and his methodology was completely fine in what he did but that's it that's where the story stopped for him right next project yeah his wife sadly died halfway through the excavations um, and I, you know some had said he just wanted to move on so he stopped what he did fit the narrative move on mm. um, and it's fascinating it's, it's such an interesting story because you you always assume that the Romans just brutalised the place and came along and just took over. Mm. And yes, I'm sure there was instances where that happened. Clearly there were. Um, but I think as Miles suggested that um, 
the Romans probably came to the Duro Trigas area, that tribe, that landscape, and probably didn't really know what to do because they probably didn't find an army or tribe or somebody in that essence. They probably just found a lot of farmsteads and they were there ready to fight, ready to battle. And there were just people happily farming away. Um, yeah, the landscape looked in, in, the, in the Iron Age Hill Fort sense very much like what it does today. There was no one ready to fight them, um, mm. certainly in this, this landscape. And it's fascinating, truly fascinating. I, I, I love doing that. And and that site, that Iron Age Hill Fort at Maiden Castle, mm-hmm. yes, because of its size of its of its um, earthworks, just takes your breath away. And as you know, Hedley, trying to get a drone shot of the place, <laughs> I, I had to fly like yeah. half a mile back to yes. get it all in. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Yeah. So Old Sarum is a bit like that, but Maiden Castle is something else. I mean, yeah. You know, I I, I took off to somewhere to the west of it uh, when I was there. I was in there in the middle of the summer and uh, or, yeah. or in the summer anyway and they had all the sunflowers. They had a sunflower maze to the north of it between Old Sarum oh, and okay. not, sorry, Maiden Castle and Dorchester. Yes. But there's a footpath that goes out to the west and, you know, my my drone, you know, is, is bigger and more intrusive I guess than yours and, and so I didn't <laughs> want anyone to see it. Um, yeah. But I, I sent it off out to the west and you're right i mean i've got the drone in the end i'm not even looking at it side on i'm looking at it length on yes. so yeah, in yeah, theory yeah. you think well i should be able to you know get it all in shot but as soon as you turn the drone around to look at it it's like oh okay yeah. this is bigger than i thought yeah. and i had to sort of you know reverse it out as you say sort of you know to, to the limit of where i could actually still see the drone just to yeah. to fit the foot heel foot and end on so, I mean, yeah, they said at its peak, mm. there could well have been up to 1,400 people living there comfortably, you know, right. not sort of not sort of crammed in, uh, because mm. it's one of the hill forts, it's almost the exception to the rule where they actually did uh, live there for quite some time. Um, but yeah, I think it's like something like mm. 800, nearly nearly a kilometre from end to end. So it's it's, it's got very complicated uh, ramparts, hasn't it, at the east and the west? Both gates, yeah, both gates. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a bit maze-like. Um, so mm. unless you'd um, already sent some scouts there to work out how to get to the actual gates, well, you yeah. have your work out because you might end up sort of wasting time climbing a hill for uh, climbing yeah. a, in, an embankment, realising that actually you've got to... Um, yeah, go up another four, yeah. Yeah, um, wow. Yeah. Fascinating. So fascinating I, I was going to say, there's one more thing. Yeah. If you are ever going to visit Maiden Castle and you have time on your hands, number one, go and see the amphitheatre, which again mm. has Neolithic um, heritage. It's a, um, It was originally like a huge mound, Neolithic mound. Romans took it over, turned it into an um, amphitheatre. That's just in the south of Dorchester. But also... Yeah. One of the most fascinating things is one of the only remaining aqueducts in this country goes from Dorchester, sort of north west up the valley. There's like an eight mile aqueduct. Um, mm. And it's just, again, it's a beautiful thing because it just carves yeah. its way through the landscape. Um, mm. So Dorchester is such a wonderful place to visit for your, not only your sort of your more recent history, but um, yeah, a bit of prehistory, a bit of Roman, a bit of everything, really. Mm. Very good. Very good. So the, the size of it. So when I was there, I was staggered, as you say, how how huge the hill fort is. I mean, it, it, you can't see from one end to the other. As you say, it's probably about a kilometre long. Um, yeah. It, it is, and it is obviously elevated, but it, it's it's kind of it's one of those sort of almost peanut shaped hill forts, isn't it? A bit like yeah. Beacon Hill. Um, but the, the thing is, it's kind of um, the internet is lying. I think so. I, I yes. looked it up. So there was an argument I saw on on Twitter. I think it was because people down uh, on the South Downs are saying no, Sisbury Ring is 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 larger than you know Maiden Castle. Yeah. So you know I didn't get involved at the time. I was watching this argument, um, and then so someone put on there no, you know Sisbury Ring is sixty acres in size, Maiden Castle forty seven, <clears throat> and I looked it up, and sure enough, that's what. You know, the internet says that Sisbury Ring is 68. I mean, I've been to both. They are both enormous hill forts. They're, you know, yeah. they, they are the, the two largest hill forts in the UK by far. Of the two, Maiden Castle feels larger. Now, I haven't measured it on a map, but there's a, a slight 
curveball here again. There's another fly in this eye, man, excuse me. <coughs> and that's the... Um, I was wondering over, uh, you know, with WC21, looking at, you know, um, Warbury Hill, Hill Fort from above, that looks very, very large. Now, I looked that up. And so if we're saying Sisbury Ring is 60 acres, Maiden Castle is 47, and that one of those is probably wrong, I looked at Warbury Hill Fort and that says 82 acres. So yeah. if you believe the internet... Walbury Hill is by far the biggest hill fort in Europe, followed by Sisbury Ring, followed by Maiden Castle. Do you know what? Now, I'm looking now, Hedley, and it's all over mm, the place. It's all I mean, over the place, isn't Wikipedia it? Wikipedia has Sisbury yeah. Ring down as 208 acres. It has... Right. Which is ridiculous. It's not, not the case, is yeah. it? Yeah. So my, my conclusion is it's all rubbish on the internet. Everyone's trying to outsmart each other. Um, and I think the correct order is Maiden Castle, then Sisbury Ring, then Warbury. Yeah. I'm not disputing that they're the three largest hill forts in the United Kingdom, probably in Europe. Um, but mm. from, and this is a gut feeling, when I'm there, Maiden Castle feels the, the largest to me. Um, do, yeah. Do you know what the solution is to this? Oh, this headley. Google Earth. Wow. Good. I mean, measure number it. one, yeah, that would be to measure it clearly. But the solution yeah. is. We need somebody to start a database of UK hill forts. You're looking I don't know at me, who's up you? for that. Task. You're looking at me. I I'm knew looking it. at you. Well, okay. I I probably look. Let me speak with Wendy Morrison, Doctor Wendy Morrison. She's the hill fort expert. Um, I just run the Facebook group, which, by the way, we're now just under eighteen thousand members, which is yeah, good. very popular. Um, isn't it? It's very popular. Some great posts people are putting in as well. Um, but um, yeah, I I did measure. Warbury Hill uh, along its longest part and that is 800 and something metres so it's not far off yeah, you know yeah. it, it, it's it's not far off um, but yeah um, I'm, I'm going to be this is going to kill my OCD now I think I think what you should do Hedley, is start up mm. a Google Sheets Google Sheets mm. spreadsheet yeah and um I, we can happily muster a few volunteers that mm. would have access to Google Sheets. We yeah. could we could get them to. What, we don't just want size. Yeah. We can have a lot of different criteria to make this a bit exciting. Yeah. Um. This this should be a thing, Headley. This should, I think this should be a thing. Yeah. A I think you're right. Database. We could stick it on Wikipedia at some point. You know. Yeah. As built by the um, incredibly. Uh, popular Wessex Ways podcast team and volunteers. I mean, uh, you know, let's put this out there. Who's up for volunteering? Stick your name in the comments below. What have I done? Mm, yeah, yeah. What have you done? You are oh, right. Okay. <laughs> also, while we're at it, we our podcast has been getting longer. Uh, I think this is probably going to be shorter today because we don't have a guest. But with the one with Tweedy went on for you know better part of two hours, hours and and yeah. we were talking quite long into the night afterwards as well. Weren't yes, we? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, with him, so um, yeah. I put if, if if anyone's got any ideas how long the ideal podcast should be. I mean, this is long format. You know, long form yeah. post- podcast, isn't it? So we're yeah. not a, a five minute job. We're not, but then we're not, you know, like a, a Lex Fridman eight hour interview either. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, um, I don't think we've quite got the brains for that either. But, um, but yeah, if anyone's got any ideas how long they think, you know, they, they their idea would be, put it in uh, it, on YouTube, put it in the, the comments below. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm. Oh, hang on. I'm hang on. Hang on. Oh, you've, yeah. done the, you've done that. You've done the treasure hunt face for those listening on the podcast. Headley has just, just, I want to say pulled, that's the wrong word, but Headley has pulled the pod, the, the treasure hunt face. Pulled a there frown is. muscle. Right, are you screen yeah. sharing, Headley? Are you screen sharing? Yeah. 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 Where should we start? To... So I mean, screen... I need to choose where we start because otherwise it'll be influenced by your. Um... We start at the <clears> centre <throat> of the UK. Oh. The almighty royal town of Didcot. Okay. The only town to start from. So we will start in Didcot. Where would you okay. like to go? I mean, obviously you wouldn't really. It, ideally, you, you'd just love to stay in Didcot. I mean, you've got the railway centre. Why not? You've got 
power station. And I was wrong. It's not an Aldi. And it's not a Lidl's. It's an Aldi we've got. Uh, I always so get those apologies, as well, to be fair. Apologies for upsetting, upsetting the Didcot posse on that. Yeah. Where do you want to go from Didcot, Paul? Where should we go? Where should we go? We need to get on some kind of transportation. And I feel the only transportation of any significance uh, is the railway. Um, so let's let's take our trusty abandoned railway and head south on the uh, okay. Didcot Newbury and Southampton Railway, Hedley. Okay, yeah, so I'm not sure how, how far to... south would you like to... Where would Sir uh, care to alight? Well, I've just bought a ticket to Newbury, so shall I crack Newbury. on down there? Yeah, that's not a bad shout. That's not a bad yeah. shout. Yeah. Okay, so you're in Newbury. You, you've only paid to go as far as Newbury, I'm afraid, yes. sir. Yes. So I'm going to boot you off this particular... That's fine. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm playing gonna... along with this like this. Yeah, I'm, jump, I'm jumping on the Kent and Avon, Hedley. I'm going to... Um, hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on a um Good a barge, idea. like a yep. like a freight barge, and just sort of like be like a stowaway for a little bit, you know. Make, make it short, make it short, make it short. Make uh, it short. Yeah. A trip on the <laughs> Kent and Avon is not short, Headley. Let's face it. No, it could go on for hours and be quite frustrating, couldn't it? All right, let's head uh, go west. Either way. I mean, Thank west. God. Yes, west is good. West. You're getting warmer. And where west, where would right. Sir care to alight along the I um? Don't... I mean, do I want to alight? I'd like, just, just keep going. Keep, keep, take me along, Heather. Take me along. Okay, so you're getting warmer. You're getting warmer. <clears throat> you're yeah. getting warmer. You're getting warm. Oh, dear. Hang on. No, you're not getting warmer. All right, stop there, stop there. Stop the car. Okay. Stop the car. Stop the car. Let's get off at Hungerford. <clears throat> so you're getting off the Kennet and Avon Canal from your car. At That's a bit weird. Hungerford. But, okay. At Hungerford. Hungerford's not bad. Yeah. The, let, let's Right, so Hungerford's a good place. So where would you like to go from Hungerford? <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, I, I feel like I should head south a little yeah, bit. Yeah, why not? Where would you like to go south? I mean, to? we're going to have to take the car, aren't we? Let's, oh, that, <coughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. Well, um, well, well just, or... just head south along the A338, I guess, Hedley, and see where we end up. Okay. Well, I mean, we, this could go all the way down to the south coast, but I, I would recommend, yeah. so you're getting warmer now, you're getting colder again now, you're getting oh, really? colder. Well, I tell you yeah. what, stop there, stop there. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's jump off at whatever that ridge is. Yeah. Okay. Just so the, the River Ridge. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So you're now you are now on the um, Wayfarers Walk. Oh, is it? Okay. So you've got east or west, basically. I think I should head back in the direction I originally came from, which is to the so um, east. Okay. To the east. Do you know what? I mean, we're nearly now, back at um, what's it called? Walbury, we are back at King Jim. We are, and actually, I've covered this. Can't be here, can it? Because I covered this in a previous no, no. episode. But yeah. I hate to say it, we are at Warby Hill again. Oh, happy days! Yeah. Now we're we're not um, actually on. When, when, Warby Hill's not the focus of our attention. It's more this particular ridge, uh, which is the, the North Hampshire Downs. So if you look at this picture, I mean, for <laughs> terrible radio, isn't it? Uh, if you think about it, this is... Uh, <laughs> For, for, for those listening, I'm showing a 3D Google map of um, Warbury Hill. Uh, let me just align that with a photograph that I published the other day. I'll get rid of my archaeology one. And there we have the actual uh, Warbury Hill itself Look with the that. Wayfarers Walk heading over the top and a beautiful cloud inversion. And actually, just down here um, in this little area, you can just see myself and Mr. WC21 hmm. in the background there. Right. So um, this is the ridge. It runs <coughs> east to west or west to east, depending on your orientation. Um, and uh, if we just pop back to Bing Maps, you can see this ridge. You can see the lovely contour lines running along here. So that's sort of north, northwest to, to southeast. Um, I did a walk here. Uh, so I omitted it from my what did I do this week uh, to try and fox you. Um, I thought that, you know, I wanted to do another walk and I didn't you know want to resort to you you know finding out where i am so um this is east Woodhay. so what we can do here is we can scroll along um so east Woodhay is just below pilot hill and so you've got the northern scarp so let me just talk a little bit about the um the uh, the north hampshire downs mm. um and to do that uh, I need to describe the north wessex downs so the north wessex downs 
are it's kind of a, a horseshoe of hills on its side if you imagine that the, the sort of the mouth of the horseshoe the the, the u shape uh, contains newbury and then you've okay. got Basingstoke um, at sort of one end of it, Wokingham at the other, and then that that sort yeah. of curves around past uh, devices uh, at the, the the western end. So the the northwest, the North Hampshire. So the, the North Wessex Downs is made up by different ranges of hills. In the north, you've got the Berkshire Downs, <clears throat> and then over in the west, you've got the Marlborough Downs and the Pusey Downs, uh, and then to the south, you have the North. Hampshire Downs. Now, the North Hampshire Downs actually goes around where you are and over over to Basingstoke, but the, the North Hampshire Downs is more specifically this uh, the ridge of hills uh, yeah. that goes along the north of it with the scarp. So you've got the dip slope uh, going down to the south and the scarp slope going um, to the north. Um, it contains various significant hills. It contains actually the highest hills in the whole of the uh, North Wessex Downs. So Walbury Hill, as we've already talked about, is the king. So that's 297 metres, which I think is 975 feet. Um, you've got close behind it Coombe Hill, which is not on the map here, um, which is something like 292 metres, 293. Mm-hmm. Ink Hill, 289, uh, just to the um, west and that on its shoulder has Coombe Gibbet and then you have Side Down Hill which is the um the the, the large wooded hill beside Beacon Hill uh, near the A34 which has got um, Heaven's Gate on the top <coughs> and High Clear Castle at the bottom so my w- w- what we're going to do is we're going to uh, discuss my walk so mm. let's go to Pilot Hill uh, how do I do this? There we go. So Pilot Hill, which people on YouTube uh, can currently see on the screen, um, is not quite as high as Walbury Hill in the distance, but it's extremely steep um, and it's actually the highest point in Hampshire. Um, now, to climb this hill from the direction I'm coming from is a very, very steep climb. Uh, and it comes up from there's a road at the bottom and, and kind of like this this quarry and you can either climb up around the quarry uh, and then up some trees at the top and along the wayfarers walk or you can climb a very steep path up the the scarp of the hill uh, up to yeah. there uh, <clears throat> and of course naturally I kind of have a, a picture of that as well Look at this terrible entertainment. There we go. So, uh, got a picture of uh, Pilot Hill. Now, Pilot Hill has two tree lines plunging down the scarp to the north um, and various sort of woodlands around it and everything. Now, the day I was there on the top of the hill, um, there were some people uh, hunting with uh, with guns so i couldn't mm-hmm. get to the actual trig point um i'm not going to attempt to go to a, a trig point that's um got people hunting around it yeah um but yeah it was it was a beautiful walk so i climbed the hill um and the views off to the north um from the uh the, the wayfarers walk at the top are absolutely sublime you can see along the ridge uh to the west out towards walbury hill and then to the north, you can actually see in the distance, you can see the uh, the Berkshire Downs. So it's kind yeah. of the, the other side of the horseshoe. And then looking out to the east, uh, it's going to wait for this to resolve a little bit. You, this green mass in the background, that's side downhill. So that's kind of the, the fourth highest hill. Beacon Hill, you can just see visible just behind it. But Beacon Hill, actually, in the grand scale of things, is not actually that high. Um, yeah. So I, I climb the hill and there's a path that kind of dives down the back of the hill so you've got a lot of, a lot of these valleys off to yeah. the south and this is um very much a, a territory of uh, springs uh, and places like that and yeah. there's this one path i took down that's that's very steep it's a chalk path uh, for those on youtube you can see it in the middle of the screen here and it goes down and uh some of the views on on the southern slope of the hill are uh, really really spectacular beautiful scenery so um let me see if i can find one here oh so this was the top well there's the the looking down from the wayfarers walk and then you've got a series of gates and valleys and you can see Coombe hill in the distance uh dropping down the side um absolutely beautiful very very remote it is a hunting area 
so there were people hunting on top of the hill um there were people hunting down in the valley and so you had kind of this stereo symphony symphony of uh, 12 ball <laughs> shotguns sorry <laughs> going off all around me yeah um and that was really, really nice. Actually, I have got a picture of Beacon Hill as well. I was talking about Beacon Hill with the, yeah. the hill formed up with oh, side okay. down hill. And yeah. then you've got the, the hills we're experimenting are out to the west in the uh, in the distance. Okay. Um so yeah, it, it, it kind of plunges down and uh it, it's 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 beautiful. So I followed the track down, uh yeah. stopped for a little bit. Stop for a little bit of a coffee in the woods. And down here, I knew I was close to hunting, but I, I couldn't see it. The, 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 there were guns going off all the way around here. Mm. Um, and you could hear it echoing around the hills left mm. and right. So <clears throat> I, I didn't know whether or not to proceed along the path because I didn't know if they were just down here to the left or something. Um, so I stopped to think about it and have a coffee. Um, I didn't want to send the drone up either because I don't really want a... Uh, an expensive drone being shot out of the sky. Yeah. Um, climbed up out to the um, the southwest, up to the beautiful little village of uh, an app and very strangely named village of Fuckham. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I really hope that that came across clearly as <laughs> Fuckham. F A C C O M B E. Um, <laughs> Fackham's lovely. It's it's a very well to do village. Um, yes. You've got uh, a church in the middle called St Barnabas. Um, for those on YouTube, here it is. So, Church of St Barnabas, beautiful flint church uh, with a sort of a, a, a castle style tower uh, to the west. Um, and you've got a, a, a pub in the village called the Jack Russell. And I got attacked by a Jack Russell just <laughs> outside the pub called the Jack Russell. <clears throat> I, I feel I should win a prize for that. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, you know, I felt like inserting my walking pole into the Jack Russell and then taking it into the Jack Russell to show it off. But uh, uh, never mind. Um, I love dogs, but, you know, not when they try and eat me. So um, Jack Russell, again, th this area is very well to do. So everything's quite expensive. Um, and the as is the pub. Um, but it's a beautiful pub with a little pond opposite. Mm. Um, and they were very, very nice in there. I'm not being paid by them. Um, we used to stop there on bikes. We used to cycle from Didcot down to here and everything. Yeah. Um, I was feeling quite tired at this point. Um, I felt I hadn't eaten and I, I was, you know, all those hills were really, you know, tiring me out. Uh, so I, I spent quite a lot of time in the Jack Russell. So I didn't have many time constraints. So looking now towards the southeast, uh, I followed the road out of the village uh, and there's some tree formations here that remind me a little bit of the tree formations we mentioned in the last podcast, uh, the Battle of the Nile. And then I, I, mm. I headed sort of uh, this way. So you're heading northeast and you descend through the woods here. Now, this time of year, the descent uh, through the woods is really tricky. It's a very yeah. steep gradient coming down through these trees. Um, and I found myself because of my previous accidents descending sort of, you know, um, veering away from the path and zigzagging down through where there's brambles and everything. I'd rather get stung than fall over and, you know, break something. Mm. Um, and when I came down at the bottom of the valley, uh, there's this hunting lodge and, you know, sort of 12 large Range Rovers and people drinking wine with guns over their shoulders and stuff. So that was the answer of where the shooting was. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, they were very pleasant. They said hello. So the walk took me up again, still sort of heading off to the, the east now, up a very steep track into some woods here. And then the track climbs up through the woods and appears out the other side. Yeah, uh, and a field system. Some very nice views off to the south from here. Very quiet area. This didn't see anyone else around. Yeah, uh, and then the track sort of descends the field uh, here. You know, between the, the brown and the green, through another wood. And it goes down through here. I don't know if you can actually see me moving the cursor. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And at the bottom of the wood, there is a very steep bank to descend, and I found myself a little bit stuck there because it was it was very muddy. Um, very steep, uh, really out of my comfort zone, to be honest with you. And <clears throat> I, I did what any uh, oversized kid would do. And as I slid down it on my ass, I, I basically <laughs> didn't care about the mud at all. Again, 
I'd rather rip and you know soil my trousers uh, for want of a better phrase uh, than <laughs> um, you know end up with a, an ankle or shoulder injury in hospital and uh, basically lying in a, a little wood there in the middle of nowhere that I'm probably not going to be seen for eight years until someone <laughs> sees a, a skeleton yeah. <laughs> you know um, anyway you then meet a road um, that climbs up a, a kind of steep hill you're already very high up here yeah. um let me just show a picture from this road which one is it it is this one so you climb up to ashmansworth and this is the the road up <clears throat> very narrow road very steep um picture doesn't really do it justice but wonderful views all the way around and you can see back mm. all the way back to the hills that i'd come over to get there um absolutely gorgeous mm. uh, and then you you come up to ashmansworth now i it is actually the the highest village in Hampshire. Okay. Let me just check my notes. Ashmansworth. It's two hundred and forty meters. Yeah. Uh, people saw my cheat sheets there. Two hundred and forty yeah. meters uh, elevation. So yeah. it is the the highest village, probably the highest village in the southeast of England. I'd imagine. Yeah, actually, I was but say, yeah. certainly, <clears throat> certainly uh, in this area and definitely in Hampshire. Uh, and in Ashmansworth, it's a very well kept village. There's some lovely little sort of uh, things. So there were a few sort of hedge figures around. So <clears throat> there's this one, sort of a, a hedge figure of a, a chap with a top hat, and uh, you know, I'm not quite sure. That looks more like the bad guy from Sonic the Hedgehog, if you ask me. But um, mm. he, you know, I wouldn't want to see that at night. But it's Dr. Um, it, it's <laughs> Doctor Robotnik. That's it, <laughs> Eggman. Um, I see. So yeah. Um, I, I sat opposite this chap and, and had my, my lunch. Um, not my lunch, but a, a coffee. I'd already had lunch. Um, in fact, for those that are really interested, there's my lunch. But anyway, I don't know why. Terrible entertainment. Um, so uh, anyway, I carried on <clears throat> to the north. So you're heading now back towards the scarp of the hill. And then there's a choice here. You can either walk along this asphalt road, which bears around to the west, which is actually the road that I'd parked on originally, yeah. or carry on to the Wayfarer's Walk here, uh, which which crosses sort of east to west. <clears throat> now, the, so you, you, we've now reached the scarp of the hill, looking down towards like High Clear and, and all of that. And I realised my, I can't remember what my elevation was, but it was stuck on something that triggered my OCD it was like 990 meters or something and yeah. I know there's no more uphill from here so sorry 990 feet nine, yeah. not 990 meters so what I did is I, I extended the walk I actually went down the hill into the valley yeah and then I realized quickly that you know again my OCD is preventing me going back up the same road so I entered some woodland um, around here yeah <clears throat> and there's a track that just disappears and next thing you know you're stuck in the middle of this this you know mm -hmm. thick woodland and thistles and everything yeah. um but i knew if i just you know he has in the po plastic population the only way is up keep fighting my way up and eventually manage to uh climb through a barbed wire fence and i know i shouldn't be doing any of this but uh go through a plowed field which is absolutely terrible and then join the wayfarers walk and just to sort of reiterate what john tweedy was saying in the last episode um that these high level walks were basically there to avoid the mud in the valley. It it, yeah. it didn't work. Yeah. It was terrible. Um, <laughs> it was basically this this last mile and a half just took forever. Probably took about an hour and a half. It was just pure uh, puddles, mud all the way back. Um, there's some woodland on the scarp of the hill that I deviated into, had another coffee and managed to make a bit more progress through the woodland than I would on the path. Yeah. And then just join the original road. Now, the, the original road, you've got lovely views off to the south um, and it's kind of a um, holloway all the way down. So yeah. uh, the top of the road is uh, lined with beech trees. Uh, people on YouTube can see you've got off to the left here, you've got side downhill in the distance <clears throat> and you've got this beautiful road going along and there's some gaps in the trees where you're seeing down into the, the vale and then the road, you know, descends um, back down to the car basically and it's this yeah. lovely, long, deep hollow way all yeah. the way down uh, with a sort of a real mixture of beach and um, non-deciduous trees all the way yeah. down back to the car and uh, that was it. That was my mm. my walk. So, a bit of a strange kind of subject. Um, 
this week. You know, it's, oh, it's, right, it's just, a walk, isn't it? It's know, a nice walk. It's a walk. Yeah. It's not, you know, a scripted <clears> one like I've done the last two podcasts. But I do, again, I recommend this hill and this area, Pilot Hill, um, for those that... Um, for, <sighs> For those that are capable, I think it's probably the best way of putting it. Yeah. It's um, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful scarp, um, but it's it's not very accessible uh, if you don't have a car. It's not very accessible if you um, if you can't deal with some pretty harsh gradients. Yeah. So it's it's probably more of a summer walk than a winter walk if i'm perfectly mm. honest with you mm. but you know you got a drone you stick it up you get some wonderful views out along the uh, scarp of the hills yeah. and i think this this whole area is not as well known as the berkshire downs and the, the ridgeway and, and a3 um but yeah. the hills here yeah. are they're, they're, they're definitely higher i mean you've got the highest points along here and um you you won't see anyone all day you really won't certainly, yeah, you've got I the whole landscape yourself side, because <clears throat> the start of the test way coombe gibbet Warby Hill yeah. may be much more known, but yeah, when you go to the yeah. east of that where you are now, yes. yeah, I think it's yeah, it's part yes. of this ridge exactly. that no one goes to. I think you're right. Most people know about Coombe Gibbet, um, <clears throat> and probably half of those people know about Warby Hill, where you know the higher point. Um, yeah, and um, but when you when you're talking about the hills to the east, um, you. <sighs> Yeah, they're, they're not very well known. Most people don't know where Pilot Hill or Coombe Hill is, so they probably haven't heard of Side Down Hill. And yet these are the, some of the biggest hills in Berkshire and Hampshire, and yeah. they can be seen for miles. I mean, you see mm. these this range of hills you can see from the Ridgeway, which is not as high. Nearly all of these hills are higher than Uffington Whitehorse Hill, um, yeah. which, you know, is perceived to be a very high hill. Uh, and, I mean, look at the hill fort on top of, you know, the hill here on, on, on Warby yeah. Hill. It's absolutely magnificent. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's it's an area I'm I'm very, very quickly falling in love with, to be honest mm. with you. It's it's very easy for me to get to. And uh, yeah. I plan to spend a lot of time there, probably almost as much time as I do uh, along the Berkshire Downs. So, yeah. That's yeah. it. Not a million yeah. miles from me, Hedley. Not a million miles from me. Yeah, I mean, you, not everything's perfect about the area, but you know, you, you, you put up with you know yeah, yeah, yeah. near nearby White Wicks, uh, you know, nearby and, White Wicks. and motorways and A thirty four and, and uh, but yeah, no, it's it is lovely and it is a quiet area. Um, you're not yeah. under the not to berate where I work, but you're not under the Heathrow flight path here. Yeah, so you don't get the noise that you get. Uh, out there and everything yeah. so it's a very quiet area there's no major roads and it's mm. um i think it's a very it's a very under recognized place to be perfectly honest with you yeah 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 marvelous no no worries marvelous. um how do i stop here we are he's oh, terrible with technology I really terrible, terrible, terrible entertainment terrible, terrible entertainment, entertainment. Ter- terrible camera work i think we need Sorry, to tweet. adopt uh, adopt um, some sayings from our guests every so often. We do. We need um, a couple of WC21 <laughs> sayings, don't we? I don't know what. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, if, Warren Brand doesn't have many, he doesn't repeat his sayings much. I mean, he's he's a bit mad about custard, which is quite interesting. Um, and But yeah, Tweedy's. Tweedy's got loads of sayings. Uh, I think a lot of them are yeah. inadvertent, and I think it, they're just wonderful. They, I, I just love his videos; they're brilliant. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, I think all of our guests got their little sayings, really. Yeah. They? So, yeah, I enjoyed the roll right stones that you covered. That was a good little, good little video. Amazing how busy yeah. it was so late in the day. Yeah, <clears throat> it, it was. And again, he had that that thing that we said before, where he wasn't overly concerned about how he gets back he was more living the moment enjoying being there yes and uh, i think that yeah so many so many people are obsessed with the logistics and you know don't have the ability to sort of do things relatively on a whim i think it's um, human nature isn't it i, I can't yeah. do what he does i need a plan i don't know I'm, I'm very jealous yeah i am but you know he takes us with him anyway doesn't he yes of course yeah. of course so speaking of youtube channels i want i I think some of our viewers and listeners do quite like when we mention new mm. channels that we've been talking about and obsessing with. And I think we mentioned, or I say we, Tweedy mentioned a couple of times, Allotment Fox. Oh, yes. And I've been obsessing with Allotment Fox, as yeah. he will himself attest to, 
over the last <laughs> couple of weeks because I've just been spamming yeah. his videos with comments. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's such a. I think he's evolved his style a lot mm. over the last sort of six months to a year. But I really love his cinematography, and it, I doubt he sees it as that. Can um, you just explain who he is um, quickly? What he does, rather. What he does. So he basically Sorry. his videos are very much from our Wessex area, yeah. and he will go out and he will talk about one specific place but he will do that on the back of a lot of research from saxon mm. charters anglo-saxon charters and that just gives it a whole new uh, the, the, a whole new way of looking at a video looking at something mm. um very intelligent chap that um yeah so he, he looks at an area based on a charter and he goes into the uh, et- etymology etymology the, the yeah. names of these places and tries yeah. to understand them better using you know where they are what they're where they came from what their evolution mm. is and it's really fascinating and, and i love that blend of him trying to sort of work out grundy's interpretations his own interpretations of the language and the namesake and the local to, and just work out the landscape using language and it's something I never considered. He he did a video a little while back about how he found New Roman Road using an Anglo-Saxon charter, and it's, I, I won't go into detail on that. Wow. But but wow, yeah, indeed, that sums mm. it up for me. Cinematography is great because he uses I don't know what he uses. He uses a, a quite a deep lens, um, yeah, to zoom into things. He's just got a really good way with the camera, and I think yeah. it works really well choice of music is great and uh, very relaxing it's not youtube which is why i don't think his channel is huge but it should be yeah. huge because of the work and the research he does to sort of come up with a, a production and they're only sort of six to eleven minutes long but yeah thoroughly enjoyable a really different way of looking at the landscape um and there's yeah. another reason why he isn't big because his thumbnails aren't youtube they're not capturing they're not sort of you know, they don't hook you in. They literally do mm. what they say on the tin, which is great. Um, yeah. It tells you exactly what you get. Um, yeah. Yeah, we, and they're, they're thoroughly enjoyable. They're very relaxing, really good cinematography, especially in the more recent ones, and are incredibly um, you know, good pieces of research to find out more about what he's doing on that day. And I love it. I love it. It's a great channel. I thoroughly recommend Allotment Fox. Yeah, um, I, I second that. I've, I've, <clears throat> I've, I'm kind of going down a few rabbit warrens with videos, um, and Allotment Fox is kind of, I'm, um, I've watched two or three of his videos. Fantastic, uh, especially the Segsby Camp and the the Wayland Smithy. Um, yeah. And if 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 the two or three videos I've watched are anything to go by, um, it's one of those sort of rabbit warrens that I'm on the precipice of. I'm about to go over. I'd also yeah. uh, put uh, James Archard in there as well. With his hill forts and uh, springs, um, yep. I talked to David Carson about him today. Okay. So yeah, um, <clears throat> we'll we speak more about him next time, I think. But he's yeah, he, he he's really really good, and he sort of takes you on a bit of a voyage of discovery. But but with Allotment Fox, you're right. He, he's basing so much on the you know the, the place names and you know marrying yeah. it up with other concepts and and uh, you know places nearby, and it, it's it's enthralling, isn't it? Really, it is really because it, it reminds me yeah. of the Alex Langlands talk that we went to mm. where yeah. he talked about the ones like in context of the Anglo-Saxon charters. Mm. And I, I, I found that completely new for me mm. personally, that that's something we should try and sort of delve into a bit more. Again, I've, from my point of view, I'll be careful because it's not very YouTube, but nevertheless, it's important aspect of research is trying mm. to understand the charters and the names and what that meant in the context of the landscape. Fascinating. Really fascinating. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm. So, should we do YouTube comments? Yeah. Always interesting. Okay. So, the last video, <clears throat> as we've said many a times, was the one with Tweedy. So, um, we got 40 comments on this one so still you know quite a lot um yeah and um, more views actually um so sam walks a lot uh basically saying looking forward to our, our walk in the dark so yes that mm. went really really well now we 
I'm going to save allotments fox comment till last because yep. I think this this is worth uh, finishing on. I think it's really really good. Yeah. Um, so Oscar the rescue dog, good man Tweedy, uh, the beaten track one five six. Going to try the Barry Conway trick. It seemed to work. Well, here goes allotment fox, allotment fox, allotment fox. <laughs> So we seem to have people commenting and chanting the names of uh, people who we eventually get on. <clears throat> so Allotment Fox, if you're watching Stroke Listening, which you know I think he probably is because of oh, his so. comment. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I think that there's kind of, I think we're informally casting a net out here and seeing if we can pull it in and see if oh, there's be an good, Allotment be Fox flapping yeah, I, in yeah. it, but. Not everyone wants to be on podcast, to be honest with you. No. You know, it's, yeah. it's not everyone's Indeed. cup of tea, so I understand. <coughs> uh, Chris H5319, excuse me, hang on. He said, I love this podcast. He's, he's walked the ox drove a couple of times, but long stretches are a nightmare, except in the very driest conditions. Yep, I think we can probably throw Wayfarers a walk into that as well. Yeah. Uh, we prefer the Shaston drove on the other side of the Ebel. Agree about Avery. Sal- Salisbury Cathedral Spire is about 6,500 tonnes. Correct. Agree with Paul Ree, the whole issue of uh, misperceptions of history, uh, like urban myths. Suspect Ree, the Welsh in Dorset, John, was correct and was referring to Iwern Courtney, Shroton, which is also yes. known as Shroton. Shroton. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, just caught up to the allotment fox reference apologies so he's Lomond Fox is getting a lot of love here isn't he yeah, um, love the As way Headley de- love the way Headley developed a fleeting Her- Hercule Poirot star moustache part way through <laughs> courtesy of his cat so I did have a sign of a slight Hitler moment Hitler moustache moment with my cat um, yeah, so he, he does correct us some one thing that the Stonehenge tree clumps are reportedly the Battle of the Nile, not Trafalgar. Yes, yeah, but um, nevertheless, it still is interesting. But, yeah, yeah, and he's uh, we've led him to follow Sam Tweedy and WC Twenty One. He says for which I will ever be grateful. So yeah, so appearing on this podcast does seem to get you followers, and I know WC Twenty One um, has gained quite a lot of followers. Uh, not, I'm not saying it's because of this podcast, but I think it's just because his videos are really starting to propagate the communities that appreciate them now. Yeah. Um, so Barry Bollard one four oh eight, great triple albums worth of material. Well mm-hmm. done on the BBC uploads. However, not surprising they didn't want in any treasure hunt clips. Yeah, uh, the corporation definitely... are trying hard yeah. to attract audiences. Uh, yeah, chapter marking is a good suggestion. That's a great suggestion. I think it's a very good suggestion. I need um, to write we... it down as I edit it, basically. <laughs> yeah, we have a very long comment from David Bellani three three zero eight. I've been following him on Instagram, and he's got some wonderful pictures from Spain. Um, saying John Tweedy was an excellent guest and very good sport too. Uh, absolutely no terrible entertainment on his videos. I mm-hmm. enjoyed every single one, and he's sure that Keith Floyd would have enjoyed watching his channel. It's just what he would have done too. Yeah. Uh, Floyd on Wessex, it might have been called. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's actually he's made a lot of comments on there. Um, he did say, and this is quite interesting because I was talking about HMS Victory last time. Um, yep. My talk was uh, for those that didn't listen was on the historic ships at Portsmouth. I really enjoyed doing that. I have to say that I really mm. enjoyed that. Um, he said uh, David Milan has been fortunate enough to visit Victory many times, including <clears throat> once for a party where he dined in one of the state rooms. Uh, wow. The commemorations, it was the commemoration of the 200th anniversary of Battle of Trafalgar and they were closely followed, uh, oh, what did he say here? Oh, in fact, wreaths were laid uh, in the sea just off Cape Trafalgar by the three navies and, and descendants of the key figures. Uh, he says, mm-hmm. it's time I got myself besmirched with some tweed. Look up besmirched. I love that word. So we have here a future guest, Linley's. So Linley's 360 is the YouTube channel of Warren Brand, who we've been talking about. He's done another fantastic walking video uh, since the last time we've done a podcast. Uh, up again in the Brecken Beacons, uh, Banal yep. Brechniog. Uh, oh, I'm so going to get shot at for mispronouncing that. Um, mm. 
and uh, he's also done a, a, a model railway video. He's, he's making one in his garden, which is uh, pretty enthralling as well. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so he's looking forward to joining us. Yes. Uh, he says, uh, referencing use of the term guys, I see the word is usable for any gender. As a teacher, I made a specific point of using the term guys for any group of students. Uh, what other... Uh, says, I think he's right, isn't it? You know, when students say, hi, sir... Uh, the easy response is good morning guys and everyone i know of any sort of persuasion seems fine you know being called you know oh, I think a so, group yeah. of people yeah. being labeled as guys it's not yes. you're not labeling everyone as male you you know no. it's if you say he's a great guy you you know you're talking about someone who's male yes. but you know Correct. if you you've got a mixed group of people and you go hi guys you know you you you're talking to everyone equally sort of thing yeah tweedy outdoors um he Oh, he's he's talking about chapter markings as well, uh, yeah. which I think is 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 an idea. Uh, you know, it's, it's up to you, Paul. I think I'm hoping I've spared you a little bit of editing this time by providing the pictures by sharing yeah, my useful. screen. That is you? useful. Yeah, WC Twenty One UK Productions Limited, another member of the gang. Uh, great to see Tweedy on Wessex ways. Um, he hasn't visit, visited HMS Victory since around the age of eight, uh, and yeah, yeah he remembers it very clearly. Um, mm. atmospheric moving atavistic is my word again I'm nicking that from Tweedy <laughs> uh, the bewildering treasure hunt is always fun no. yes and we've got another comment from <laughs> Tweedy Outdoors excellent um, so again he's, he's apologising I'm sorry it ended up for such a long episode stop <laughs> apologising uh, he's brilliant um, yeah so uh he said, Headley asked for a one sentence answer to why tweed, and I proceeded to ramble on for several minutes. And I apologise to him. I think I cut across him a little bit on the victory talk. So I think I was just kind of stuck on a script and, you know, unable to get away from it. But I did yeah, unfortunately good. cut across him. So, um, Davy941, hi, Headley, Paul, and Tweedy. I laugh so hard at people that complain about traffic, noise, and wind. Really enjoyed this one. Well done. Thank you, guys. Tweedy's very popular, isn't he? Uh, James yeah. Walks in History. Now, this is James Archard who I was talking about. Oh, okay. uh, definitely subscribe. James Walks in History 3848. Um, enjoyed this. A feeling almost that I'd walked into a mature university student's room uh, with everyone <laughs> having a chat after a few drinks. So, yeah, I think that's that's brilliant. <clears throat> David Bellani 3308. Uh, just <laughs> said about the great intro, Roaring with Laughter. Uh, no burgundy, I'm afraid. It's uh, Ribera de Duero for me. Uh, and then Barry Conway just says, Tweedy, Tweedy, Tweedy. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Smashing. So, that's it. It's been a bit longer than I thought, actually. Just yeah, this. isn't it? God, we've done a near, we've done a near, a near on Tweedy <laughs> without Tweedy. Yeah, that's frankly, fine. haven't we? That's fine. <clears throat> but we do have, as I say, I think we've probably got one or two more of these um, before we have guests on again. Um, yep. We have got loads of guests. I mean, Anna Dillon's probably going to be on. I'm going to try and rope David Carson in. I've also um, feathered the idea with Alex Langlands as well. Um, yep. So we we and we've got some great people. We've got Warren Brand. Um, also, has uh, been speaking with the People's Countryside. Um, yep. So that's William and Stuart, who I'm good friends with. Uh, they're, they're a great pair. They really are. <clears throat> and um, in fact, yeah, People's Countryside. Good good one to subscribe to. Um, and also, uh, yeah, Marianne Okota. I mean, wow. <laughs> you know, fame. So that's that. she's probably going to be March, I think. We're, yeah, we're, I think it's in March. March. Yeah, I've got a Madara. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, can't wait. Enjoy this. Super. So, like, subscribe. I can't, I've got to get that action. Like, subscribe, share, hit the bell, whatever. Um, I, I just, I this is why you're, in, you're a YouTuber know. and I'm not. I can't say those yeah. things. Well, we do, yeah, if people things. like it, then they, then they interact and that all helps, doesn't it? So, yeah, if you it like does. it, tell your friends, etc. Yes, yeah. we'd be appreciative. So if you really have a hankering for two middle-aged men drinking <laughs> beer and talking <laughs> crap, then please do share our podcast. Yeah. So thank you very much. Well, I'm done. Hey, if you're done. I'm done. And we will speak to you all in episode 25. See you next time. <laughs>